Hallelujah. Shalom, shalom to you, brother and sister. Hallelujah. Pray the Lord Jesus Christ to bless you, whatever you are, hearing my voice. I pray that the Lord bless you and strengthen you. Hallelujah. As we are about to share the word of God, uh, let us bow our heads and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, uh, we come before your holy presence, your glorious presence. Uh, hallelujah. That uh, by your spirit, uh, you will lead us and guide us uh, as we share your word. Uh, holy Spirit, we do not know how to speak, how to teach, how to preach. Holy Spirit, come and speak through us. Come and share through us that which you desire us to know. We give you praise. We give you honor. We pray that we will not hear just information, but we will also receive impartation in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I want to take this opportunity also to uh, thank uh, uh, our Father in the Lord, Dr. Mosai, Dr. Esther, for the, this opportunity uh, to stand here to share with you the word of God. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you. Hallelujah. Today, this Bible study is going to be consecrated on the spiritual gift. And we are going to begin with the first gift. And uh, before we begin, let us go straight in the word in the first Corinthian chapter. 12, verse 1. And then we are going to go to verse 8. Now, concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. This is Paul telling you and I, we that are brethren, fellow believers in Jesus, he said, I don't want you to be ignorant. I don't want you not to know the gifts of a spirit. For Paul, it is important that you and I not just have information concerning the gift, but we also operate in the gift. So you can just know, have information about the gift, but if you don't know how to operate in the gift, this doesn't benefit you and it does not benefit others. Hallelujah. So let's read the verse 8. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. Hallelujah. So if you continue from verse 8 all the way to 11, you see the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. But today we are going to focus on the first gift, the gift of the word of wisdom. Hallelujah. What is the gift of the word of wisdom? The gift of the word of wisdom is a supernatural revelation of the mind or will of God for the future by the Holy Spirit. Let me say it again. The gift of of the word of wisdom is a supernatural revelation. Hallelujah. Of the mind or will of God for the future by the Holy Spirit. The gift of the word of wisdom reveal the future unknown. This gift the Holy Spirit operates this gift to reveal the unknown in the future. He reveals the future that is not yet known. This gift focuses on the future. 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 That's the key. Future. This gift focuses on the future. So, it is the supernatural revelation. Hallelujah. Of the mind or will of God of the future by the Holy Spirit. We are going to dissect a little bit this gift. Now that we have a definition of this gift, we are going to go to the Bible to see where and how this gift 
operates. So let us go now in the book of Acts chapter 9 from verse 10 to 16. Acts chapter, okay. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias, he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. But behold, he prayeth. And I have seen the vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hands on him that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of, of this man how much evil have done to thy saints at Jerusalem. And here you have authority from the chief priest to bind all that call on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me, to bear my name before the Gentile and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Hallelujah. Amen. So here we see both the gift of a word of wisdom and the both the gift of the word of knowledge in operation. But specifically from verse 15, specifically from verse 15, but the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me, to bear my name before the Gentile and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. See, here in a vision, the law revealed the future of Paul, formerly known as Saul. At the time where the law was revealing the future of Saul to Ananias, if it were just Ananias, there's nothing he would have done or do with uh, this man who was uh, persecuting, arresting, tormenting all those that call upon the name of the Lord Jesus. Paul was uh, persecuting them. He was arresting them. He was uh, chasing them from city to city. And then the Lord spoke to Ananias to go to a house that this Paul is. And Ananias was like, nah, Lord. <laughs> I heard about this man. He has been persecuting your people. Those who are calling upon your name. And then the Lord revealed now by the gift of a word of wisdom, the future. When Ananias heard the mind of God for Paul, the counsel of God for Paul, then Ananias arose and went and uh, did what the Lord commanded him to do because now he see, he heard, know that, okay, this man, even though he has been persecuting, chasing, tormenting the people of God, he is a chosen vessel. He is a disciple who will bear the name of the Lord Jesus before the kings and before the children of Israel. And he will suffer many things. At that very moment, Paul had not yet begun to preach the gospel. But uh, throughout, we see that Paul yet preached the gospel before the children of Israel, before kings, and he suffered many things. They stoned him. They almost killed him. They beat him. They whip him. So, this vision that was revealed to Ananias through the word of wisdom was fulfilled in the life of Paul. Hallelujah. 
Now, we are going to see also in Genesis chapter 37, verse 1 to 10. Genesis chapter 37. And Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger, in the land of Canaan. These are the generation of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was a feeding the flock with his brethren. And the lad, and the lad was with the sons of Bila, and with the sons of Zilpa, his father's wives. And Joseph brought unto his father the evil report. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age. And he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that the father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. And Joseph dreamed a dream. And he told it his brethren. And they hated him yet the more. And he said unto them, Here, I pray you, this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaf arose, and I also stood upright, and behold, your sheaves stood round about and made obeisance to my sheaf. And his brethren said unto him, Shall thou indeed reign over us, or shall thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams, for his words. And he dreamed yet another dream, and told it his brethren, and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me. And he told it to his father and to his brethren. And his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed Come to bow down ourselves to thee, to the earth. So here, we see the gift of a word of a wisdom in operation in the life of Joseph. He dreamed concerning the future, what the future hold in store for him. And because of that, his brethren began to hate him. Even his father was like, wait a minute. Do you mean that uh, me and uh, the whole family will bow down to you? And uh, you know the story. That's exactly what happened. Joseph was taken through to Egypt and became the prime minister. And then the law used him now to be a blessing to his brethren and the father. You know the story how Jacob came to Egypt and all the eleven they dwell in Egypt for many years. So indeed the dream that Joseph dreamed which was revealed to him by the Holy Spirit using the gift of a word of wisdom to give him specific information. Not the whole council, but specific concerning his future, which came to pass. At the moment where Joseph was dreaming, he had no idea of what he would go through. But he saw the future. Through the gift of a word of wisdom, the future is revealed. The future is shown. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In John chapter 16, verse 13. In John chapter 16, verse 1-3. John 16, okay. Howbeit when he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. This is Jesus speaking. That one of the functions of the Holy Spirit, he will be revealing to us the things to come. Meaning what? 
in this age, the Holy Spirit, one of his main assignment, he will be revealing by the gift of a word of wisdom, the things to come. Before the things manifest, before the things show up, the Holy Spirit will reveal it to you ahead of time. Hallelujah. And we see this gift in operation in the Old Testament through many prophets. Hallelujah. We see it in the life of uh, Isaiah. We see it in Jeremiah. We see it in Ezekiel. We see gift in the operation. Even the psalm. Let's see. Let's go to Psalm 69, verse 21. Uh, last week, I shared uh, one of the seven of the fifth, seven, last seven words of Jesus. What Jesus said, I thirst. Okay. They gave me also gall for my meat. And my thirst, they gave me vinegar to drink. Now, this is a specific information. Hallelujah. Reveal to David concerning Jesus many centuries before Jesus showed up physically. The Holy Spirit will show us, will reveal to us the things to come. So the same Holy Spirit revealed to the people in the Old Testament the prophets, they do one, one of the prophets, the things to come concerning Jesus. And one of the, those things is that they will give him a vinegar to drink. And we saw it in John chapter 19, hallelujah, verse 28, that exactly that will happen. But this was revealing many centuries before Jesus was born physically. That's the gift of a word of wisdom in operation. We also see in Psalm 22, verse 1, verse 18, specific information. Okay. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou? Oh, would you? Okay. Why are thou so far from helping me and from the word of my roaring? Hallelujah. And exactly, Jesus repeated these words on the cross. But this was revealed centuries before he came. In verse 18 of Psalm 22. Hallelujah. Verse 18. They part my garment among them. And cast lots upon my vesture. It happened exactly. But this was revealed centuries through the operation of the gifts of the word of wisdom. In Isaiah 16, verse 10. Hallelujah. I, I mean, I mean uh, Psalm 16, 10. Psalm 16, 10. Psalm 16, 10. For thou will not leave my soul in hell, neither will thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption. The body of Jesus did not see corruption. On the third day, he rose again. But these were written many, many centuries, years before. So, these are specific information concerning Christ revealed way before he came on the scene. And when he came on the scene, he fulfilled them. Let's look in Isaiah 53 verse 5. Isaiah 53 verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. You see, exactly Jesus was wounded badly on the cross. By his strap, we quote this verse every day, most often. But do you know that by the operation of the gift of the word of wisdom, the prophet Isaiah received these words, specific information concerning the Messiah before he showed up physically on the earth. So the gift of the word of wisdom is so important, hallelujah, that Jesus specified 
Hallelujah. One of the functions, one of the mission, one of the duty, one of the things that the Holy Spirit will be doing when he come is that he will be showing us, revealing to us the things before they come. The thing before they come. In 2000, uh, 2012, I was uh, praying and fasting. And the Lord revealed to me a country in West Africa. Here I was, here in the U.S. In my closet, fasting and praying. And the Lord revealed to me how a president who has been in a, in a office for 25 years he showed me how that president was going to fall. How that president was going to leave office. Two years later, exactly as the Lord showed to me, that president left the office. He resigned because of the population. But two years before, in 2012, the Lord revealed to me. In 2014, it happened. That president today, he's not in his country. He's in uh, another country. But the Lord revealed to me two years before. That was the operation of the gift of a word of wisdom. Revealing to me the things to come before they happen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I believe all many of us, if not all of us, this gift of a word of wisdom is already operating in your life. Maybe you don't know it, but this gift is already operating. Now, how is gift, this gift of a word of wisdom, how does this gift operate, or how does this gift operate through which means? So we are going to see a couple of ways which we already read about in Genesis chapter 37, verse 5. Genesis chapter 37, verse 5, which you, you already read. Hallelujah. And Jacob dwelt in the land which, okay, and Joseph dreamed a dream. See, the gift of a word of wisdom can operate through dreams. I know you usually have dreams. Do you? Yes. Dreams concerning the future. If that dream comes from the Holy Spirit, concerning the future, that's the operation of the gift of a word of wisdom. Through dream. Through vision also. It can be a night vision. It can be an open vision. It can be uh, through a trance. Where you see something concerning the future. Hallelujah. In the verse that we read before in Acts chapter 9 uh, from verse uh, 10, we see how Ananias, this gift came to him, uh, operated through him through vision. I know you usually have vision. Right? Yes, you do. So, this gift is already operating in your life through vision. Vision concerning the future. The Holy Spirit reveals specific things concerning somebody, church, the government, a leader, in the future. Hallelujah. This is not the past of the present. Future. He worked for the gift of the wisdom. Future. Hallelujah. So we see that through dreams, this gift operates. Through vision, this gift operates. Through also prophecy. There are many times where uh, we hear prophecies. But it's not actual prophecy. Now, I'm not saying this to discredit. Because usually what we hear is that, oh, He's prophesied or she's prophesied, but that's really not prophecy. That's the gift of word of wisdom. But it is not because the gift of word of wisdom that we should uh, dilute, we should uh, 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 discourage, or we should not consider 
what was revealed. You see, the gift of a word of wisdom can operate through other gifts. Through the gift of prophecy, the gift of a word of wisdom can operate. The person is prophesying, but it is the gift of a word of wisdom in operation, revealing the future through the prophetic. Revealing the future through the prophetic. The person is not dreaming. The person is not having vision. He is prophesying. But the gift of a word of wisdom is in operation through that prophecy. Hallelujah. Praise be to the name of So, don't discourage. Don't dilute. Don't uh, degrade the word that you receive through the gift of a word of wisdom. Because it's the same Holy Spirit who reveal, hallelujah, the prophecy, the, uh, the gift of the wisdom, knowledge, all of them is by the same Holy Spirit. So don't again say, well, that is not prophecy. That is just gift of the wisdom. Most of the time, we, we say things like that and we, we degrade, we, we put aside the word because... It's not prophecy. No, it's spoken, it's released, it's revealed by the same Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. The gift of word of wisdom can also come to you through the audible voice. You just hear the Holy Spirit say something to you. In my uh, past uh, messages, I share with you how uh, one night I came down, kneeling down, praying, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, if you change your carpet. The carpet in your living room. I'm going to bring such a man of God in your house. And I obey exactly what happened. So, that was in the future. He spoke the thing to me. I did it. A couple of days later, that thing happened. So, the gift of a word of wisdom can operate through you for many, many ways. If you know the ways by which this gift operates, then you can begin to identify, oh, this gift is already in operation in my life. Hallelujah. Now, we, it is important that uh, this gift operates to reveal things to us, but it is more important that uh, we know how to activate this gift. And uh, this was one of the things I was asking the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, how is this gift activated? And I was asking, I was not receiving the answer until, you know, I decided, you know, maybe I should, uh, I, I wouldn't preach, I wouldn't share this message yet. I would just wait until. But two days before, the Holy Spirit gave me the answer. Clearly, he told me that for the activation of the operation of this gift, we need to spend time with the giver, it came so, uh, so fresh and so uh, tangible to me. I said, "Wow!" I didn't even thought about it. When I was asking Holy Spirit, "How does, how can we activate this gift?" Because I can't just go and share information. How can we operate? How does, what do we do for this gift to operate fully? So first, we should spend time with the giver. So if you desire this gift to operate in your life, begin to spend time with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And also meditating in the word of God. More you meditate in the word of God, more you begin to receive things concerning the future. Hallelujah. Prayer. You see, I was a fascinating praying when the Holy Spirit revealed to me how that president was going to fall, and he did come to pass. He was told me through worship, hallelujah, worshiping the Lord, that gift also operates, hallelujah. Friend, there's a, a, a one that I want to emphasize a little bit. You see, for us, because we are, we are here to bring soul to the kingdom of God, so how can this gift be beneficial to us in bringing soul? Through prayer of inquiry, meaning what? 
we are asking the Lord in advance the things concerning the soul in the future. Lord, who should I go and evangelize to? Or in what city, in what place should I? You begin to ask the Lord the things concerning the future. Lord, where should I go? Who should I go to? And as you're asking, the gift of the word of wisdom will be activated because you are asking things concerning the future, things concerning the soul, but in the future. You want to go evangelize. And you begin to ask for ahead of time, Lord, where should I go? Who should I minister to? As you are asking, the Lord begins to reveal to you. And now our evangelism can become more effective because now we have a specific information where we should go, who we should go to, how should we address. The Holy Spirit will reveal this to us ahead of time. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Let us pray that the Lord will uh, uh, activate this gift, the gift of the word of wisdom. Hallelujah. Because this is a powerful gift that uh, every one of us needs. Father, we thank you so much. We pray that by your spirit, you will impart unto us uh, the gift of the word of wisdom in the name of Jesus. Uh, we also pray, Father, that you touch the heart uh, of men and women uh, who don't know yet Jesus. Uh, may they receive him as Lord and Savior. My brother and sister, hallelujah, whatever you are, I want you to begin to consecrate yourself to the Holy Spirit. Uh, hallelujah for the activation of the gift of the word of wisdom in the name of Jesus. Now you, whatever you are, if you have not yet received Jesus as Lord and Savior, you are in a, a danger. So tonight, if you believe with your heart and confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, you will be saved. So pray with me, say, Lord Jesus. Today I come before your throne of grace and I ask you, hallelujah, to forgive me of all my sins. I believed, hallelujah, you came on this earth. I believe you took my sin, my iniquity, my transgression upon you. You went to the cross, you died, you were buried on the third day. You rose again right now. You are sitting at the very right hand of God the Father. And you will come to take me that where you are. I may be also. I renounce Satan, his works, his kingdom. Today I declare I belong to you, and you alone shall I serve all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, write my name in your book of life. In Jesus' name, amen. If I pray that prayer, just reach out to us, and we will help you to grow Hallelujah, in the work with the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you, the Lord keep you. The Lord call his faith to shine upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. The Lord give you peace. Shalom. God bless.